walk through the fire, the fire of persecution and tribulation here and there. It says, you shall not be burned, nor shall the flame scorch you. Why? Because he is with us. Because he is holding us with his righteous right hand. He is covering us. Have the confidence of the presence of God. Amen. Number four, be patient. Because delay is not denial. Be patient and persevere. Be patient and persevere. For, God, for you to allow God to have his final say in, our, in our, every situation in our lives, we need to be patient and we need to persevere. When you look at the, when um, Jesus was following Jairus to his home, he got to verse 25. When he got to verse 25 of that same Mark 5, that comes the woman with the issue of blood. Ah, Jairus was following Jesus. And here is this woman from nowhere touching the hem of the garments of Jesus Christ. Making there to be a delay. What do you think Jairus was thinking? I can think what he was thinking too. Woman, leave this man alone. Let's, let just, let him go with me to my daughter's, to, to heal my daughter. He will be already frustrated and irritated by this woman. He will be saying and cursing in his heart. He will even want some people to drag the woman away from Jesus. But Jesus had time for everybody. Even when there were so many things going on, he could do things at the same time, different things at the same time. He knew what he was doing. He waited. He healed the woman with the issue of blood. But what happened? They came to tell him the, the news about his daughter. But before that, I want us to know something about delays. When there's a delay in our lives, when there's a delay on, in situations, in circumstances, in something that we are looking up to, for, up to God for, whatever it might be, it might be marital, it might be spiritual, physical, it might be emotional, it might be ma it, whatever the situation we are waiting up on the Lord for. Let's be patient. It's not, it's, uh, some of the, it's not something that can hold you down completely. It will come to pass, whatever you are looking up on to God for. It might be, to us, it might be a delay. But God is saying this situation or some circumstances are not to be dead. It will come to pass. But we need to go through a time of delay to build us up. Because there are two types of delays in one's life. One of them is divine, the divine delay. And the second one is a demonic delay. When we're talking about a divine delay, it is it's set up for, from God for a purpose, for a reason. To bring us to our destiny. To bring us to our dream. To our divine dream. That divine delay might be the test of our faith. Might be the test of our patience. It might be the test of our faithfulness. A test of integrity. A test of character. But at the end result, God always takes glory for it. Because the Bible says in James 1, 3, it says, Knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience, but let patience have his perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. He's bringing us to a perfection. He's bringing us to our destiny. That delay that you think is a delay is not a delay in the eyes of God. It's a plot, it's a plan of God to bring you to that desire of your heart. Amen. But when we are talking about the demon, demonic delay, that's a delay that is set up by the devil. That's why we need to distinguish. We need to discern what kind of delay is this. Is this demonic 
Or is this divine by God? Because if it's a demonic delay, it's time for you to activate your weapon. Hallelujah. Because God has given us the weapon of warfare, which is not carnal, but is mighty through God in the pulling down of strongholds. So every stronghold of delays has to come down in the name of Jesus. Why? Because God has given you and equipped you for that, for you to fight against the devil. And he has always given you the victory. It's time to activate your hammer. The Bible says that it's not the word of God like hammer that breaks the rock. So every rock, every stone, every mountain that is standing to hinder you has to be broken down by the word of God, which is the hammer of God. You need to, you need to activate the consuming fire of God. Because the Bible says God is a consuming fire. And so those things that do not belong, that wants to hinder you or pull you down or, or take you down, you want to activate that weapon of the consuming fire of God and consume them completely in Jesus' name. And when it's time for you to speak to the mountain, the Bible says speak to the mountain. Hallelujah. Because it's going to, uh, the mountain has to move. The Bible says in Mark eleven twenty three, 23, For as surely I say to you, what, whoever says to this mountain, Mark eleven twenty three, 23, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt and in, in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done. He will have whatever he says. You will have whatever you say. So when you speak to a mountain, when you speak to a situation, it needs to listen and answer to whatever you have said by doing what you have said. Because God has given you his word. His word cannot be hindered. His word goes forth to go and go to those situations, to go to that situation and that circumstance to operate in it. Because the word of God in your mouth is great. Hallelujah. Who had thou great mountain before Zerubbabel? Who had thou great mountain before you? As the Bible says, become a plain. Hallelujah. And if it's the Red Sea, they need to depart. They need to part. If it's a wall of Jericho, they need to fall down flat. No matter what the delay might be, do not give up. Do not cave in. Allow God in that situation. Number five, get rid of the negative voice. Or quiet the negative voice. How to allow God to have the final say. Quiet that negative word. The Bible says in that same, um, in our text, Mark 5.35, while he was still speaking, while Jesus was still speaking, meaning while Jesus was still speaking to the woman with the issue of blood, while he, he was still telling the woman with the issue of blood, daughter, your, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. While he was yet speaking this word, what happened? Some came from the ruler of the synagogue house who said, your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? Devastating reports. Breaking news. Shocking news. Faith shaking. Hope destroyed. Dreams shattered. Hopelessness. What you came to Jesus for? What's the point? The child is dead. But who has the final say? <laughs> He's dead. You think that situation concerning your academics is dead? You think that situation about your papers in this land is dead? You think that situation about your child is dead? It's not dead. You think your finances are dead already? Or your life in general you think is dead? It's not dead. It's momentary. It's for a moment. Hallelujah. And J Jarius must have been thinking. It's over. He must be thinking. It's over. And here comes the bad news carrier. Oh, the daughter is dead. Let's see what he's going to do. He went to Jesus. Faith killers. Destiny killers. 
dream killers, negative people, naysayers. Oh, it's done. It's finished. That's the end. Hmm. They don't know the God we are serving. Because no one can say it's finished with you until God says it's finished. Hallelujah. The power of the tongue. Don't allow. Don't accept any negative word from nobody. Do not accept what is negative. What the word of God has not said about you, reject it. Because the Bible says death and life are in the power of the tongue. Proverbs 18, 21. Death and life. Death and life. Death is something that is not in the word of God that is contrary to the word of God. That's the word of death. But word of life is the word of God. It's the word of encouragement. It's the word that will lead you, that is in line with your destiny. That's the word you want to hear. That's the word. He said, why trouble the, the teacher further? When the Bible says in Isaiah 62, verse 7, the Bible says, and give him no rest. He says, give God no rest. I can determine I am going to ask a request today, tomorrow, till years and years until I get it. Because the Bible says that we should pray until our joy be filled. I am praying in faith and not in doubt, but I'm still repeating what I just told him yesterday. Until I get it, until I get it. I see it with my spiritual eyes, but I want to see the manifestation. And so he says, ah, don't rob that teacher. But the Bible says, give him no rest till he establishes, until he makes Jerusalem a praise in the earth. So why are, you getting, why, are you making Jesus, why are you making God rest? Hallelujah. Why are you giving him rest? His duty is to help us. He's here for us. He's our protector, our provider, everything in all. He is. And so go and give him rest until you have gotten what you desire from him in line with the word of God. Hallelujah. And so don't let us stop praising him. You can keep rolling on the floor. You can see you know, screaming, shouting, praising, whatever. Just keep on. Give him no rest. Because God has the final say. But we didn't hear the Bible say, Jairus said anything. But we know that things would have been going through his heart. He is a normal human being. Amen. The Bible says in Lamentations 3.27, it says, who is he? Lamentation 3.37. Who is he who speaks and it comes to pass when the Lord has not commanded? Who are you to say what God has not commanded? Who are you to prophesy a negative thing in my life when God has not commanded you? Who are you to speak what is not in line with God in our lives when God has not commanded it? Who is he? That's what the Bible says. Whose reports will you believe? Are you going to re believe the reports of the doctors or the lawyers, of the bankers, of the admission um, officers? Are you going to believe that negative report? Just as it, uh, the 10 uh, the spies came and reported negatively to the Israelites? Whose reports will you believe? We shall believe the reports of the Lord. Because the reports of the Lord says we are healed, we are restored, we are the head, we are not the tail, we are redeemed, we are his righteousness. We are favored and blessed. We are, we are, we are well. That's the reports we believe. We are prospering. Get rid of that negative word. Or that negative voice in our brain, in our, in our head. Because we start thinking negatively. We start thinking thoughts that are not right. We have to start changing our thinking. In line, to be in line with the thinking of God, with the word of God. Because the Bible says, as a man thinks, so is he. So when we start thinking negatively, when we start hearing the negative voice, we need to quench it with the word of God. We need to quench it right away and replace it with the word. If there is a voice saying, will you ever get better? Your voice, your reply should be, the Lord rebuke you in the name of Jesus. I, will, I am whole. I am healed by the stripes of Jesus Christ. 
That's what we need to say. Replace it immediately. Don't let it settle. Don't let that negative voice settle in your life. Replace it immediately with the word of God. What has the word said concerning that situation? That's what you need to speak. Hallelujah. So if you want God to have his final say, get rid and quiet those negative voices. Number six, do not be afraid. Only believe. That was the word Jesus said. Whereas the Bible says in Mark 5, 36, as soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he said to the ruler of the synagogue, do not be afraid, only believe. Do not be afraid, only believe. Do not be afraid, only believe. Why? Because he was at the trash, because he knew that the devil had started communicating. And Jesus stepped in right away, immediately. The devil was throwing the greatest at her. He was throwing the greatest weapon he had. Why? Because he knew that Jairus was at the verge, at the threshold of his breakthrough. He knew that it was only remaining a little mile for Jesus to walk to that house and lay the hands upon that child for healing. And it's like, I would throw my best weapon. And he threw his best weapon, but not knowing that Jesus is greater and higher and powerful than any weapon the devil can throw against you. And so, he, the, heat, the heat of the problem was great. It's at that time when we are about to get to that breakthrough, get that employment, get that peace, get that joy, get that miracle. That's when the heat, the battle is so hard. That's when the battle is so great. Why? Because he does not want us to get what God has said. Second Chronicles 20, 20 says, Believe in the Lord and you shall be established. Believe his prophets and you shall prosper. Believe. Only believe. When you believe, that's when God can step into that situation. That's when God can have his final say. Because Isaiah 41 verse 10 says, Fear not, for I am with you. The reason why we should not fear, the reason why we should believe, is because God is with us. He says, For I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Just believe. The children of old, the people of old, God had to encourage them too. Abraham was told, do not be afraid, Abraham. I am your shield and your exceeding great reward. He told Moses, do not be afraid. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. He told Joshua, do not be afraid, nor be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you everywhere you go. He told even Ezekiel, ah, do not be afraid of them, nor be dismayed at their looks. He said, looks, do not, even, do not be afraid of it. And he said to Jehoshaphat, do not be afraid or dismayed because the Lord God, or because of the great multitude. And God is telling us, do not be afraid only believe and you will see the salvation of the Lord in Jesus' name. And so they were going. And um, he had to, you know, take some people out. The Bible says in Mark 5, 37, going through our text, and he permitted no one to follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. So Jesus Christ selected those who are going to go with him to Jairus' house. Check your companions. That's number seven. Check your companions. Check those who are following you, who call themselves friends. Check them out. Can two work together except they agree? Are they in unity of spirit and faith? Those were the inner caucus of Jesus. They had the same mind of Jesus. And so he picked them. 
we need to pick and choose our friends. Pick those who will elevate you, not those who will bring you down. Pick those that will take you to Jesus and not away from Jesus. Pick those that will keep you from falling and not those who are going to make you fall. Keep those who will uplift you and not downgrade you. Pick them by the power of the Spirit of God. When Gideon was going to, the, um, to fight the Midianites, he picked himself. 32,000 people wanted to follow him to that battle. 32,000. He was confident. Oh, I have all this army. They're going to fight against the Midianites. If we get home, we can, we can read Judges chapter 7. And when he, he was going and God said, uh-uh, no. Tell those who don't want to go to that battle, go back home. And let those who want to go follow you. Hmm? People dropped down. We had 22,000 people following, following um, Gideon. 22,000 people. God said, nope, these are too many people. God said, I will choose myself. Tell them to drink water at the well. Tell them to drink water at that river. I know those who are going to follow you, and I know those who are not going to follow you. And out of um, 22,000, 300 people were picked by God to follow Gideon to the, to the war. And they had the victory. You need to pick. You need to ask God to choose those that you want, that he wants you to be close to. Your friends. Hallelujah. Who are those who are supposed to be in a caucus with you? Those with the same mind. The mind of Jesus Christ. You need to be sensitive in the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And so, um, number eight. How to allow God to have the final say. is for us to change our atmosphere. The atmosphere that Jesus went into. When he found them, they were wailing, they were crying. In now, uh, if we can read Mark 5, we already read it, 5, 38 to 39, where there was so much commotion. People were weeping, crying, because the child was dead. There were hired cry, um, there were hired people that cried and weep, and there were fake, there were fake people, and there were real people crying. And Jesus knew the fake, and he knew the genuine. Noise, commotion, confusion. God is not an author of confusion. The atmosphere there was a depressing atmosphere. There was the aroma of death in that atmosphere. What spirit is operating in your atmosphere? What spirit is operating in your homes? Wherever you find yourself, in your jobs, in your business. What spirit do you allow to have its way there? It depends on you. It depends on what you are speaking into the atmosphere and what others are speaking into. So Jesus speak, spoke by faith. He says, the child is not dead, but sleeping. That's the uh, last part of verse 39 of Mark 5. He spoke into that hopeless situation. He spoke into that depressing atmosphere. And what he spoke was the word of faith. He's not dead. She's not dead, but sleeping. It negated the power of death. And it changed the atmosphere right away. When you speak faith into that atmosphere, when you speak faith into wherever you are, that cloud of depression needs to leave because you are already speaking the word of God. There are not two atmospheres that can occur at the same time. No. One has to overrule. And it's the spirit of God that always overrules the spirit of the devil. So when you get into a, into a place, speak the word of God into that place. Release the spirit of God into it. Hallelujah. Number eight, do not be distracted. Keep your eyes on Jesus, the author and the finisher of the faith. When you see verse 40 of that same Mark 5, they ridiculed him. They ridiculed Jesus and they ridiculed him. But when he had put them outside, 
He put them outside because they were ridiculing him. He took the father and the mother out of the child and those who were with him and entered where the child was lying. They ridiculed him because of their unbelief. They mocked Jesus because they didn't know who Jesus was. Jesus had no time to debate with anybody. He just needed quietness and reverence. So he pushed them out. Do not be distracted by those things going around us. But look unto Jesus. Have you been ridiculed because of your faith? Have you been ridiculed because of your color, your gender, your age, your circumstances, what you are going through? Don't worry. You will have the last laugh in Jesus' name. You will not be disappointed. Those mockers, those, those who are ridiculing us, are the ones that will be put to shame in Jesus' name. Because God is turning things around. Now, going to the last part. Mark, uh, Mark 5, 41. Then he took the child by the hand, said to her, Talita kumi, which translated, little girl, I say to you, arise. The Bible says, immediately. Immediately. No delay. Just immediately the girl arose and walked for, for she was 12 years of age. She, the girl arose and walked. Immediately. The mockers didn't have the final say. Those who are weeping did not have the final say. The negative confession did not have the final say. The evil reports did not have the final say. But Jesus had the final say in that situation. Because the girl rose up. Because God brought forth that girl out of that death and made her alive. I am saying that anything that has brought us down, whatever it is, the Lord is chopping them off in the name of Jesus. And is putting us by the hand and saying, arise girl, arise boy, arise brother, arise sister. Because he's going to do what he has planned to do. The Bible says immediately that girl arose. When God speaks into that situation, that situation has to cooperate with the word of God. Because the word of God is stronger and powerful. And so when the word of God is being expressed in any situation, it has to respect the word. Hallelujah. And so anything, the Lord God Almighty will cause us to arise. In the name of Jesus. Because when he holds us by the hand, he will, will arise above our situation. We will arise above that pain. We will arise above that hardship. We will arise above that sickness. Why? Because the chain that is holding us down, that chain that is holding us down, that is holding that situation down, that is holding our blessings down, that is holding our breakthrough down, because the, the word of God, every chain has to break in the name of Jesus. Because it says immediately, I say immediately, those chains need to be broken, that we might be set free, that we may be, ab uh, may be able to arise. The Bible says in Psalm 33 verse 9, Psalm 33 verse 9 says, For he spoke and it was done. He spoke and it was done. He commanded and it stood fast. What did he say? Arise. And what did the child do? She arose. So shall it be in our lives in Jesus' name. Anything, anything that seems dead in our lives, as Jesus says, arise. The Lord God, we arise in the name of Jesus. Because he's the king of kings. He spoke, he spoke to the storm and the storm stopped. He spoke to the wind and the wind obeyed. He spoke to the girl and the girl arose. And yet he spoke to Lazarus and Lazarus arose. He will speak into every situation we are going through and bring our request to come to pass in Jesus' name. Whatever the situation is, he prophesied to the dead woman, to the dead girl, and she arose. Don't let the devil cheat you out of your possession. Don't let the devil cheat you out of your inheritance because you don't know what the word of God says. Stand in authority with the word of God. And the Bible says in that 42, and they were overcome with great amazement. I said when, when God walks, when God is in that situation, when God turns your situation around, 
People will see and be amazed in the name of Jesus. Astonishment will be their portion. Because those who saw you dead yesterday will see you come alive today. Those who saw you in darkness will now see you shining. Those who saw you poor will see you now rich in the Lord. Those who saw you sick before, they will start seeing you as whole in the name of Jesus. Those who saw you as nothing, they will see you as something in the name of Jesus. Those who saw you mourning, they will see you laughing in the name of Jesus. I said those who saw you in the valley, they will see you in the mountaintop. Because God says this. He says that our situation is for a moment. The affliction is for a moment. Because when he arises and when he pulls us up with his hand, we will arise in the name of Jesus. Jesus. So do not sorrow because help is on the way. Because our breakthrough is on the way. And the miracle is on the way. The promotion is on the way. The favor is on the way. The joy is on the way. That child you are looking up to is on the way. I say your papers are on the way. Just know that God is in it where we depend on him. Only believe. Because when that man just believed... When Jesus said, do not be afraid, only believe. And he stood with that word. And he followed Jesus Christ. Then Jesus, what had the final say concerning his daughter? Death did not have. And because this is a month of restoration, hallelujah. Because God says, I will restore the years that the swarming locust has eaten. There is a restoration. There's a spirit of restoration operating in our lives in Jesus' name. Because that's what the word had for us. He says, I will restore health unto you. Restoration of your health. Because Jesus has the final say. Our God has the final say. Because this month is a month of restoration. That is the final say in our lives. Restored physically, spiritually, Financially, emotionally, maritally, in our business, in our spiritual life, in the name of Jesus. For this is our month. We are restored in the name of the Lord Jesus. So let's just rise up and just bless God. Let's bless God. Because God is in the business of bringing us, bringing his word to be the final word in our lives. Because let's just watch, let's just, just praise God. Lord, we praise you. Lord, we bless you, O oh God. Lord, we honor you, we adore you, because indeed you have the final say over our life, over our situation. Father, we thank you, God, for you are operating in our lives. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Jehovah God. We bless your holy name.